Hello BookTube. I have some mail for you. I've tried consistently in the last few days to, to make mail hauls and they just haven't worked for one reason or another. I made a few of them and they just weren't uploadable even by my rather generous standards of what counts as uploadable. So we're going to try this again. We'll try, I've got a few packages here in a box, so we'll see uh, if this works without interruption, without me wool gathering or uh, or launching off into some sort of tirade that lasts for 45 minutes and has nothing to do with anything, but we'll see if that's the case. So the first thing here is not a book. It's a catalog, which is great. Steve loves catalogs. <laughs> this is uh, New York University Press. This is their uh, spring 2020 catalog. It has a uh, an actual request sheet, which I really, really like. <laughs> the actual An actual request sheet is uh, where you tick things off and you let them know who you are is much better for me than the uh, the sort of kumbaya Here's our catalog. Feel free to let us know what you like <laughs> so I'd, I would much rather uh, Make a checklist and send it off and have somebody deal with it that way uh, So I won't I won't uh, Drag you through <laughs> here, but uh, uh, NYU press does a lot of really good things So I imagine I will have a few requests here so we'll stick to that. That is great. That is a doorway to uh, to lots of books. Uh, then we'll do the uh, the packages. And I'm, I'm going to resist the urge to try and hurry through these because hurrying doesn't matter. It'll either be a good video or it won't be. <laughs> so it'll either be an uploadable video or it won't be. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what this first one is. Uh, it's a finished copy of something. Oh, okay, we've seen this already. This is a finished copy. It comes out in mid-February of Eden Mine by S.M. Hulse. This is the finished copy of a uh, beautifully and engrossing second novel by S.M. Hulse. The story of the siblings Joe and Samuel Faber, the fifth generation of their family, to occupy the same piece of land in the northwest corner of Montana. Within the shadow of two mines that were once economic engines for the region, but have since closed down. As Eden Mine opens, Joe is alone, just beginning to pack up the contents of their home because the state has unceremoniously seized their, law, their land in order to make way for a new road. It's amazing how much of the American West, the great American West, over which I have tramped every single inch. It's amazing how much of it belongs to the federal government. It's incredible. Uh, you, the wide open spaces there where people can go and make a homestead. <laughs> well, virtually every foot of it that you're setting foot on is federal land of one way or another. Uh, as she packs, Joe he hears over the radio that a bomb has gone off at a courthouse a few hours south. The same courthouse where she and Samuel recently lost an appeal to hang on to their home. A young girl, the daughter of a preacher who was leading Sunday service in the church across the street, is in critical condition from the blast. Soon, with a visit from a local sheriff, Joe learns that her brother, a private young man with a history of trying on various extremist ideologies and a past affiliation with the local militia, is the chief suspect. Well, okay, so this comes out in mid-February. February is shaking up, shaping up uh, to be a very interesting looking month. Uh, not just for... Uh, fiction, but for non-fiction as well. I, I really, really, I mean, I know they're all supposed to be interesting, <laughs> but, but uh, look, there's lots of stuff that I want to weigh in on. Uh, so what do we know about S.M. Hulse? Her debut novel, Black River, was a finalist for the Penn Hemingway Award, an Amazon Best Book of the Month, an ALA Notable Book, an ABA Indies Introduced title, an Indie Next Pick, and the winner of the Reading of the West Book Award. Good lord. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> Uh, she received her MFA from the University of Oregon and was a fiction fellow at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, and an avid horsewoman, she has lived throughout the American West. Okay, so that's probably going to add a sort of a, a shading of authenticity to the book. Can't wait. Uh, so I will wait, nevertheless. <laughs> I say I can't wait, but I will. I still have a ton of January stuff to do. Uh, although January is waning. It's, it's time to start... Organizing the uh, February shelf. Time to move everything up out in the other room. That's That comes faster every time. Uh, all right, so what is this next one? What is this next one? Oh, uh, let's see. This is an April book. This comes out in mid-April. It's a novel. It has a requisite hideous American cover. 
It's called Man of My Time. Uh, a new novel by the best-selling author of Sep the T Septembers of Shiraz, Dahlia Sofer. It's the story of an Iranian man and former revolutionary wor reckoning with his capacity for love and evil. And it's a timely work that explores how, many, how humans struggle to hold on to their convictions and dignity amidst political upheaval. It offers a new window onto Iran's history, art, and character at a crucial moment in our nation's relationship. Set in Iran and New York City, Man of My Time tells the story of Hamid Mozafarian, who is an alienated from himself as he is from the world around him. After decades of ambivalent work as an interrogator in the Iranian government, Hamid no travels on a diplomatic mission to New York, where he encounters his estranged family and retrieves the ashes of his father, whose dying wish was to be buried in Iran. Oh my. Okay, well. Uh, great. Uh, and the author uh, is the author of the national bestseller of the Septembers of Shiraz, which won the Penn Robert Bingham Prize, was a finalist for the National Jewish Book Award, long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction, and a New York Times notable book. So these two, these two have really uh, a pretty good CV behind them. <laughs> so the book was published in 16 countries. And the author is a recipient of a Whitting Award, and her work has appeared in the New York Times Book Review, The Believer, and the Los Angeles Review of Books, and elsewhere. Born in Tehran, she lives in New York City. Okay, so once again, the, uh, that, that shading of authenticity. We shall see. Uh, this one comes out in the spring, so I don't, don't, have, to th I don't have to think about seeing it right away. But then we have the box. Uh, let, us see, let us see what we have uh, in the box. <laughs> Will it be one book? Will it be many books? <laughs> uh, always fun, always fun to get a box. Oh, it's two books. Okay, it's two books. Oh, great. Oh, all right, fan fantastic. This is, we, so the, we have um, finished copies here of two books that we've already seen. Two book, for two, I think they're both February releases, and we've seen both of them uh, in advance copy, unless I did not upload <laughs> those videos, in which case, in which case we have not. Uh, so the first one, let's see. Mid February, this is Kathleen Kent's book, *The Burn*. Uh, with uh, law enforcement hand on the gun, right there. Um, readers are probably already familiar with this author from her best-selling historical novels, including *The Heretic's Daughter*, and likely remember her auspicious first-time foray into crime writing with the 2017 book called *The Dime*. Do we remember the dime? Did I get the dime on this channel? Uh, and that book went on to be an Edgar Award finalist, and it's currently being developed for TV by 20th Century Fox. <laughs> remember, uh, in the late 90s, a whole bunch of people wondering, what was 20th Century Fox going to do with their corporate name once it became the 21st century? <laughs> of course, the answer is nothing. <laughs> but that's, uh, so what, what have we got here? We've already heard about this book, but just in case you weren't uh, paying close attention. Uh, this explosive sequel to The Dime pits Detective Rizik against a powerful drug cartel with shady ties to her own Dallas Police Department, picking up where The Dime left off. Ooh, do I need The Dime? I probably do. Uh, the wounds from Betty's run-in with the apocalyptic cult, The Family, are still fresh. Uh, and she's having trouble... Betty is, detect, is Detective Rizik. Uh, and she's having trouble readjusting to life as it once was. She's back at work on, as a narcotics detective, but something isn't right. At work, where someone has been assassinating confidential informants, or at home, where she struggles to connect with her loving wife, Jackie. To make matters worse, Betty's partner seems to be increasingly dependent on prescription painkillers. He was prescribed for injuries he sustained while rescuing her. Ugh. It's amazing that she doesn't have these problems. <laughs> it's, well, why, well, that's... Uh, no one's gunning for her, and she doesn't have. Uh, well, it it sounds like uh, she certainly has a version of PTSD, regardless of what else she has. Um, Kathleen's crime writing is no joke. She melds her exceedingly inventive and subversive plots with an intuitive sense of atmosphere and action. Mighty big claims. Let's hope Kathleen Kent can live up to them. I don't remember the dime. If I read it and I don't remember it, that does not speak well. <laughs> but I don't think I read it. Uh, she understands the beats that drum underneath the in-between spaces of Dallas, Texas, and doesn't take her readers along for the ride so much as hits the throttle and hightails it. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, well, she lives in Dallas, 
uh, and she wrote The Dime, as well as three best-selling historical novels, The Heretic's Daughter, which I did read, uh, The Trader's Wife, and The Outcast. Okay, so this comes out in mid-February. Uh, I will certainly get to it. God, I would have got to it anyway, but now that I know that it's a high-octane thrill ride, <laughs> I won't be able to resist. Uh, then the next one is, uh, this is, this is uh, a series that I know a little better. Uh, and I think, I think this is also, uh, I think this has also been optioned for TV, if I remember correctly. But uh, let's, let's see. This is uh, High Five uh, by Joe Ide, Ide, Joe Ide. Um, and this comes out in mid-February, probably. Yes. No, this comes out in late January, the last, last Tuesday of January. Uh, this author be brings his distinctive and brilliant protagonist, IQ, back once more this winter with High Five. The fourth installment in the series is easily Ide's most ambitious, raising the stakes even higher for his South Central Sherlock Isaiah Quintaby, or Quintabi. In a departure from his usual pro bono work around the neighborhood, Isaiah takes on a paying client. The victim, the vicious arms dealer, Angus Byrne, whose employee, Tyler, has been murdered and whose daughter, Christiana, is currently the only suspect. So a vicious arms dealer hires this guy to find out, obviously, that his daughter is not guilty. <laughs> uh, and you, you take a job for someone like that, you'd better succeed. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Isaiah must clear Christiana's name or else, but trouble and pressure easily mount when he discovers Christiana and her five distinct personalities. Oh no. Oh no. Of all entirely different recollections of the events leading up to Tyler's murder, Isaiah must use his wits and his street smarts to untangle the multitude of the multitudes of this case, but let's hope they are a match. <laughs> okay. And the the, uh, the IQ novels have won lots of a critical acclaim in the mystery, in mystery circles. Uh, and this comes out uh, in late January, so I need to get to it right away. Uh, okay, great. I have read at least one other book in this series uh, and really liked it. Uh, so, actually, I can put, I can put the two hardcovers, uh, The Burn uh, and High Five, on the list for tonight. Uh, and then we have uh, Man of My Time by Dahlia Sofer. So we, we're dealing with all four of these are made-up stories. All of them are fiction. And all of them from people who uh, have extensive histories of accolades behind them. So that's good. Uh, and the, the other one is S.M. Hulse's book, Eden Mine. So I may, uh, I may be in really good hands for all four of these. Uh, so that's great. And I also have the NYU Press uh, catalog, uh, just in case. I have the NYU Press catalog to, uh, to while away a, a, a mouth-watering hour of, of running over titles and seeing what I want, what other people might want, what looks really good, what will get lots of attention. That would be lots of fun. Uh, but I don't see... I don't, that's all the mail that I have, and I don't see anything, re, any reason not to upload this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do that and see, in, the, in, in case you're getting starved for mail. So I'll wrap this up before anything goes wrong, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.